Hey, everybody. Always exciting and intriguing to talk with you, iPath, today. Chris from the Gartner CFO Conference. Chris, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Evan? I'm doing great. Really intrigued by the latest and greatest from UiPath. Maybe introduce yourself. And for those two people who've never heard of UiPath, your current mission and uh, vision. Yeah. So I'm uh, Chris Radich, live in the DC area. So this is a pretty close drive for me. Uh, I lead our global industries transformation team. And we're really on a crusade to uh, bring UiPath to the industries we serve, verticalize the company. And uh, and also do the same for core CXO functions such as finance. It's why we're here today um, with a very exciting session coming up in a couple of minutes. And UiPath, I mean, we're we're the leading automation company really in in the world, and started with RPA in 2005, uh, RPA Robotics Processing Automation. But we're so much more in terms of our mission now as we've gotten into adjacent technologies such as intelligent document processing. Uh, we're getting into the co-pilot space with generative AI-based automations. And uh, we're serving organizations to eliminate routine work and to help knowledge workers move from low value to high value activities. We're doing that across industries, across lines of business. Um, and I think in the next three years, we're gonna see, we're gonna talk about this, Evan, we're going to see a, just an absolute shift in the way work is executed globally. Well, it's an exciting time, and I can't wait to attend my next forward. I've been to two, the UiPath uh, Premier event, so there's lots of this topic to discuss. Let's dive into finance organizations today on the ground. Uh, wh what are some of the pain points that you're seeing firsthand talking to CFOs, and what are some of the impacts today, not, not in the future? that we're seeing of, of things like AI and, and automation in particular? Yeah, the, the so I've been speaking with CFOs and I also kind of go in the rear view to last year at the same conference. The AI and automation buzz was the core theme, without a doubt. And this year, I think we're at the inflection point where CFOs recognize that there's this coming shift to, it's called the autonomous finance organization. Wow. And autonomous finance means... Let me break that down. Autonomous agents will be running your manual transactions. Mm. And finance is, as, as you probably know, there's so much manual effort in order to post transactions to the general ledger, to get tax reporting out, to produce financial statements. So autonomous finance is on the minds of these CFOs. And I think the struggle is I have this whole business I'm supporting in that mode one, that manual mode. How can I possibly shift and think about automation at scale? Um, so that's that's the balance they're trying to figure out. They're spending 80% of their time on this manual effort. So 80% of their time is going to be freed up. Mm. Um, and they're doing this. So they're thinking about autonomous finance while they're thinking about ERP migrations. So they're either planning for cloud ERP migration, things like SAP S4, Oracle Fusion, Workday, I'd say every CFIO I've talked to is either planning for the migration or in the middle of it. And lastly, so if you figure those two things out, how am I going to do autonomous finance? How am, how am I going to migrate my ERP, a multi-million dollar investment, hundreds of millions in many cases? Uh, how do I get my cash flow right in this economic time with both defensive and offensive motions? And that would be things like growth, strategy, market shifts, credit tightening, and uh, this new concept of zero-based budgeting. So it's a lot that they're dealing with, but they're in a great position, I think, with the technology advancements to pull this off. Wow, that's quite a lot to unpack there. And you're trying to do that with one, one of your roundtable sessions I see is from scorekeeper to innovation leader. So talk about that and w what the impact is on the current scope of, of CFO roles and their day-to-day -day work. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I think what we're going to, it's later today. And what I presume we're going to unpack is that inflection point from the manual transactional support organization to the autonomous finance organization supported mm. by 
digital workers, not manual transactional knowledge workers. And uh, like there's studies out there that we're at 50% automation rate within a CFO or an FP&A organization. So think of that. 50% has, has been automated. Some organizations are below that by a significant amount, but it has shown it can be done. And now it's how do we get to the 95%? Some of the big four consultancies are saying 95% of FP&A work can be automated. And then what do you do with that, that time? And I think it's scary to go to put your hand up as a CFO and say, I'm going to automate 95% of my work. Because what does that do? It's like resources. <laughs> Everybody's afraid to do that. But if you look at your value chain, and I talked about, remember, the cash flow, defensive, offensive. Yeah. Imagine if you had that 95% of your time to think about how you're going to help the company grow and drive shareholder value. So that uh, that's kind of what's going on with the from scorekeeper to innovator. And of course, it's how do we prioritize AI investments in use cases? Um, just basic blocking and tackling. Let's start with what technologies we're going to invest in and what are the big four use cases that are going to make the biggest amount of impact across the board? Um, so that's, uh, it's a huge, it's a huge shift though. And I think it's going to happen in the next two to three years. I really do. Cl the cloud era took a decade mm. to show this level of from 50% to 95% mm. We're still on that journey. I think the AI and this autonomous finance is two to three years, uh, which is incredibly exciting as an automation and AI provider. Exciting indeed. Well, let's talk getting practical and rolling up your sleeves. You're doing a migration with Deloitte, I understand, uh, currently underway. Can you talk about that initiative, moving to an SAP Clean Core? Why is that move important and what are the challenges and opportunities there from that project and related ones? Yeah, and and I worked on, I mean, really every company I've been at, I've advised or helped with with ERP modernization mm. strategies and the one the one cardinal sin is customization so what happens is a it doesn't matter what business you're in you're unique you need unique business processes across finance supply chain human capital management this uh kind of shows itself as custom code custom code uh custom rice objects using an sap term and over time, that custom code becomes too much to maintain. It's a debt, just like a financial mm. debt, uh, too much to maintain over time. And eventually, you cannot drive any agility or change into your business because you're spending all of your time maintaining your custom uh, ERP. Mm. So clean core, what that means is if we're moving to these modern ERPs in the next decade, because we have to, we have to start clean. So there's a principle of no customization. And UiPath has done that. We're, we are drinking our own champagne and taking our own advice. Uh, we are not customizing the core system. We are committing to standard business processes, but here's the big, uh, the big architecture principle I'd like everyone to, to think about. You need somewhere to put the customization. There's no such thing as a standard enterprise, cookie cutter enterprise. So you put the customization in what we call an automation tier. We're, of course, using UiPath, but you can push those customizations and build automations. Uh, you can build intelligent document processing to improve a business process. And uh, you can also build lightweight workflows on UiPath. So then you keep the core clean. Because if not, you look back and it's like, wow, that was a mistake. Well, incredibly important work, uh, great insight. Let's talk a little bit about you and your team and, and the mission. I've been following and collaborating with you, I passed for over five, uh, six years, maybe seven. Lost track, but it's been an amazing journey. You know, as a relatively new lead in the in this industry global go to market, where's your focus? Where where do you see your mission, and where are you taking it in the next year or two uh, moving forward? Well. There's all these grand visions out there. 
you know, including including at this conference of autonomous finance, I'd say every industry and shared service function is has these visions out there of the digital worker, the autonomous worker and organization. So as I've come into the organization, I've recognized our, our technology is so powerful. If there are very few tech. It's why I, I joined UiPath. Very few that could be the automation tier that I just mentioned that can drive these improved business processes with multitude of automation capabilities. So what we're doing on the industry's transformation team is we're building out prescriptive AI-led automation pathways, we call them, which is it's easy to have a vision saying, I'm going to be an autonomous finance organization. But the question is, what is the stepwise journey to get there? So we're, we are building those industry visions, the stepwise pathways or journeys. And um, we're also doing one more thing. We're getting very uh, deep in terms of understanding the knowledge workers across these global industries. Because at the end of the day, uh, if you're just talking about AI or automation in, a, in isolation as a technology, it means nothing. It's how are we going to help the knowledge worker move to higher value activity in order to drive growth and innovation. Um, so a lot of storytelling here, a lot of deep research and analysis from my team. And uh, our vision, though, is to help drive towards these au autonomous organizations with much more prescriptive advice than is probably going on at some other companies that are just thinking about their technology play. You know, how do I position mm. my technology? Wow, that's incredibly thoughtful and interesting approach. So beyond today, I see you have your hands full of presentation, multiple presentations and workshops and sessions. So I know it's always a challenge to get away from that. Thanks for taking the time. What else are you looking forward to over the next weeks, uh, months, any other events, travel? You must have quite an agenda on your Oh, uh, We're headed. That's, that's a good, good uh, way to end. The, the net, I, I always think about one event in advance. That's the easiest way to fly. <laughs> But we're heading to SAP Sapphire. So this oh. whole clean core concept and the partnership with SAP has been a big go-to-market push. And we're very proud of it because with SAP as the really world's premier uh, ERP investment and provider and this whole automation tier approach we're bringing, it's, uh, it's a, we're seeing a lot of momentum. So excited to go to Orlando in a couple of weeks. Great. Well, if you don't mind, if you have a time, let's check in. We'll get some feedback from SAP uh, on the ground. You could be my you know, remote reporter from the field here and share some insights from SAP Sapphire. Thanks, Chris. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes away from the busy day. And uh, everyone reach out to UiPath, follow them. They put out great content on social media, very insightful, informative, uh, not just marketing and uh, good stuff. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Evan. This was great. Take care. Take care, everyone.